The stage is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Teemu Arina, and I'm the curator of Biohacker Summit. I'm also the founder, one of the founders and biohacker in residence at the Biohacker Center. This week has been absolutely amazing already. We had the Hacking the Brain event with, together with General Electric at the GE Health Village. That was amazing. Uh, we had all kinds of different angles at which we were looking at how to hack the brain, including meditation. We put all the people in the meditation. And uh, with the speakers uh, on, the, on the 23rd, um, uh, we went in the morning for a wild foraging trip. And uh, we collected all these kind of different types of plants and herbs and mushrooms. And uh, then we cooked in the evening an upgraded dinner with um, uh, all these distinguished guests. And uh, that was absolutely amazing start for the whole conference, putting together latest scientific understanding of how the food affects our bodies, what happens on a biochemical level, and uh, uh, just flavor-wise, nutritional-wise, I'm just kicking ass right now today when I'm here on stage. Like I mentioned, um, uh, we, we are putting together this conference, um, and Biohacker Center is, is the one that is organizing it. And uh, it sort of has been growing out of the success of a book that I've been writing together with a few of my colleagues, um, medical doctor Oli Soviarvi and uh, nutrition specialist Jaakko Halmetoja. So my, I'm more of the technology geek, although I, I do go very deep into all these other aspects of uh, upgrading yourself. So in this book, we look at how do you upgrade the different systems in your life, exercise, nutrition, sleep, mind, and work with biological and technological tools. And uh, this is, uh, I, I would say, almost like a manual for how to live your life uh, to the fullest, uh, be healthy, uh, be well, and uh, Wake up every morning uh, as the best version of yourself. Biohacking is the art and science of optimizing your body, mind, and performance with systems thinking, biology, and technology. I mean, my body is, uh, is a system, and there are different inputs and there are different outputs in terms of my performance. And uh, I mean, we can use technology in different ways, but what I find intriguing and interesting is what we can do with information today and information technology. How do we connect nature with technology and machinery? If you just think about it, we are information. Information is in the biochemical messengers between our cells. It's in the electric activity in our nervous system. It's in our genes that want to copy forward. It's in our epigenetics, our environmental factors are, that are changing and affecting us and can affect our offspring as well. It's in our interaction, it's in our language, it's in our conversations, our micro-movements, it's in our behavior. All these things can be tapped into, can be mined. I would say information is the oil of the 21st century. And it's going to be as important resource as we go forward as oil has been to the Industrial Revolution. And uh, quantified self, which is defined as self-knowledge through numbers, which originates from uh, Silicon Valley, where Kevin Kelly, the, the editor of Wired magazine, was paying attention to all these new technologies that are coming out and how people are using mobile technology to track themselves. You can track all kinds of things today with these different kind of wearable sensors, implants. I mean, you can do traditional lab tests as well and self-measurements on paper or whatever notebook you have. But what I find interesting is how can we tap into that vast amount of data that we can gather today. I'm having a biometric shirt right now that shows that my heart rate is at 92 and my breathing rate is at 11 and my calorie consumption today is 259 and I see my day so far. I got a bit stressed because Ben was a bit late and I'm gonna <laughs> scold him on that one. Uh, I'm gonna put him making some push-ups on stage. I'm gonna enjoy that very much. Uh, but uh, I have the data to prove it that that happened as well. And um, the relationship between quantified self and biohacking, 
is very interesting. I mean, biohacking is really all about the self-experiments, biohacks, different kind of systemic interventions into your biological machinery, uh, or whatever we call it. And um, you might have a hypothesis that if I do this, that might happen. But you don't know until you try. You might have scientific understanding of it, you might read research papers, you might ask different kind of experts, and so on. But really, uh, you don't know until you test, and that's where quantified self comes into play. It's all about gaining a more like an outsider view into what you're doing and who you are. It helps you to uh, get a map of yourself, draw a map of yourself, and then use that map to formulate even better self-experiments. And this whole process is a learning experience. It's a, it's a learning process that continues where you start from, you end up somewhere else. And that I find very interesting. I, just recently I came back from Germany, I got the Leonardo Award on the steps of Leonardo da Vinci, from, it's under the patronage of European Union and UNESCO for my life's work in learning. And that was from 2000 to 2010. Now I'm working on biohacking, and I see that as an extension, the next step for uh, taking ourselves to the new, completely new level in terms of learning as well. In the educational circles, they don't really look at food, sleep, and all those different things, exercise, the capabilities, basic capabilities that really enable you to learn. They just think of tools, pedagogy, and so on. But what this really enables is feedback loops. You get a mirror of yourself through these technologies, through different ways of mirroring what you're doing. You can use other people for it, but you can also use data for it. So I think we are in an era where we will see biology and technology merging. Matter and bits coming one, where analog and digital is no longer a distinction when we look at technology. Technology is getting into our bodies. It's moving from our desktops to our pockets, to our clothes, and then to our bodies. And um, there is people who are, I mean, more to the technology side, and they don't look very well at those who are on, um, uh, I mean, the, the, the people who are very naturalistic and, uh, you know, enjoy just experiencing things, they sometimes look technology as, you know, something alien to us humans. But if you think what technology it is, uh, it's really created by us. What is flowing inside a computer is bits. Those are our thoughts. The technology doesn't exist without us. And so we can use all these capabilities to take ourselves to a completely new level, to transcend what it means to be human. And we have an exciting lineup, starting from all kinds of aspects that can help us to take our human condition to a completely new level. I think we have the opportunity, we have the technology. Uh, uh, Homo sapiens, since we have been you know, using tools, um, throwing stones, setting up fire, creating language, industrial revolution, computers, all of those things. The interesting thing about all those things is that I think it's our destiny to merge with the technology that we are creating. And uh, when I think of biohackers, one of my favorite biohackers is really Bruce Lee. I mean, he says, to me, the function and duty of a quality human being is the sincere and honest development of one's potential. He's a true master of all these things. What's that sound? Sorry, guys, I think we have some kind of like uh, interruption of the transmission here. Whoa, the lights went off. What's going on here? Whoa.
I don't know where you came from, but uh, that almost gave me a heart attack. But um, you are, have been practicing martial arts. Uh, you are sort of like a wushu master. And uh, uh, how does you know, all these thousands of years of tradition and uh, philosophy link today? So what kind of links do you see there? Um, I have to shout out loud. But for our tradition, the root is in Daoism. And the Daoist priests, thousands of years ago, they started a, a system of biohacking by doing experiments on themselves, which is pretty much what you're talking about now. So now we live in 2015, and some thousands of years ago, the, the Daoists started this tradition of conditioning the body, conditioning the mind, and trying to find this mythical internal and external elixir to improve health for longevity and mm. simple conditioning. So they were basically already systems thinkers, just like yogis and long-term meditators, uh, all people who are extremely interested in how does this system work, different kind of ways of understanding that. Uh, they use slightly different kind of technology. We have new type of technology today. I thank you very much. I think it's time for Ben Greenfield uh, to come on stage and uh, get everyone else, you know, the heart bumping and uh, reconsidering how you go through your day. So I guess uh, that's what we're going to do next.